Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 1240. Please turn to it. Page 1240, beginning with number 11. Number 11 says, number 11 says, which of the following is not a solution to this inequality. Which of the following is not a solution to this inequality? And the answer choices are negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 5. Out of the four possible choices here, which of the following would qualify as not a solution to this inequality? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Let's, let's add, let, let, let's We have a positive 3 here, let's subtract 3x from here and bring it here. And let's add 3 to both sides. That will get rid of that will get rid of this 3. Negative 3 and positive will drop out. And here we'll end up with 4x minus 3x is 1. Greater than or equal to. And this positive 3x and this negative 3x will drop out. And here we have negative 2, negative 5 and a positive 3 which will give us negative 2. It says negative 2 is greater than or equal to x. We cannot leave it like this. We'll have to bring the x to this side, which is same as saying x is less than or equal to negative 2. x is less as x to be less than or equal to negative 2. So let's take a look at number line here. Here's our number line here. Here's our 0, negative 1, and negative 2, and it goes on forever here. x can be equal to, x can be x has to be less than or equal to. It can be equal to, so it can be equal to or less than. Anything to the left of negative 2, including negative 2, is fine. But as we can clearly see, negative 1 does not qualify. Negative 1 does not qualify because x needs to be less than or equal to negative 2, and negative 1, of course, is more than negative 2. The answer is A. A, A is not a solution to this inequality. Number 2. Number 2. Or rather, or rather number 12 is what I meant to say. In number 12, we are being asked to figure out the average number of seeds per apple. Average number of seeds per apple and we are given a little graph here. We have to reproduce that graph, histogram it is called. And it looks something like this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are number of apples. And these are number of seeds. And you can read the graph yourself. I'm going to quickly reproduce it here. So here we have two apples. We are told we have two apples that have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 5, 7, 9. We have two apples with three seeds each. Two apples with three seeds each. So let's make a note here. Here are apples and here are seeds two apples with three seeds each so that's six seeds then we have then we have four apples we are told four apples with five seeds each that's four times five four apples with five seeds each that's 20 seeds then we have one apple with 
six seeds right here. One apple with six seeds. Then we got, we are told that we have two apples. Two apples with seven seeds right here. Two apples with seven seeds, so that's 14 seeds. And finally we got three apples with nine seeds. We have three apples with nine seeds right here. So that's uh, 27. That's it. Let's first figure out how many apples we have. We have 2 plus 4 is 6 and then 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12. So we have 12 apples. Let's see how many how many seeds these 12 apples contain. So that's a 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 6 plus 7 is 13, 6 plus 7 is 13, plus 10 is 23, so that's 3, carry 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, it looks like 7. So 73 divided by 12, 73 divided by 12, which is approximately the same as 72, divided by 2, which is 6. So it looks like on average, we have 6 apples per Rather, we have six seeds per apple. This is this is known as this is what is known as weighted average. It's not a simple average. It's the weighted average. It is weighted by the number of apples. We have two apples with three seeds each. Four apples with five seeds each. One apple with six seeds, with, which has six seeds. We have two apples with seven seeds, and finally we have three apples with nine seeds based on that graph. Number thirteen. There is nothing to this problem. You just have to pay attention to make sure that you. Don't miss something. Number 13. Number 13. It says which category accounts for approximately 19%. And we'll see in a second why they use the word approximately. And here's what is what is given to us. We have female, we have male, we have algebra one, we have geometry, we have algebra two, and then we have total. 35, 53, 62. 35 53, 62, which adds up to 150, and 44, 59, and 57, which adds up to 160, for a grand total of 310. We have 310 students, some female, some male, we have 150 female, 160 male, for a total of 310, and the question is which, which category accounts for 90%, which, which category accounts for 90%, as you can see, we have 310 students total. As I always remind you that you must have the book in front of you, otherwise it becomes difficult to follow the work. Open to, uh, always open the book to the page. Right now we are 1240. And look at the chart there, 41 rather. So let's take a look. Which category accounts for approximately 19%? Well, we know, we know we have 310 people. And we also know, we also know that 10% of 310 is 31. We have nothing here close to 31. We have 60, 60, 60, they're all around 60. So let's multiply it by 2. I'm going to do it in a different color so that you can see that this work is different. If 10% of 310 is 31, that stands to reason That stands to reason that 20% must be 31 times 2, or 62, or 62. Now this is where there are two places, there are two pitfalls in this problem, two places where people might make mistake. I'm going to share both of you, or both of those with you, because one of them actually I did fall for it myself. When I did the problem, I picked the wrong answer because I wasn't paying attention. That's the only reason. You must pay attention to what is being said, what is being asked, what are, what are you being told, and what are being what what you are being asked. And if you don't pay attention to those two things, then obviously there will rise a problem. 
One problem here is that we have 62 here, and in, in, in your haste, in, 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 in your haste, you might end up saying, oh, there's a 62 there, there's a 62, therefore the answer is females taking algebra 2. That answer is wrong. That answer is wrong because that represents 20%. Not only that, not only that is one problem, that is one problem, but what's the giveaway, what's the giveaway that this answer is wrong is that this is exactly 20%, exactly 20%, then why, why the use of the word approximate? That's one problem. Second is that they're talking about 19%. So 20% is 62, 20% is 62 here, we just established that 20% is 62, we don't need 20%, we need 19%. We need to subtract 1% here. We need to subtract 1%. 1% 1 of 310, 1% of 300 is exactly 3. 1% 1, 1 of 300 is exactly 3. 1% of 310 is 3.1. Very difficult to find 3.1 people. So we're going to subtract 3. And hence the approximation. That's where the approximation comes in because 1% is approximately 3. It is actually 3.1. And now we end up with 59. There you go. And that 59, so this was wrong. And that 59 is right here. That 59 is right here. Now the mistake I made when I was, when I was start, uh, doing this problem is that, you know, we are used, so used to seeing male and female. Male and female is always male on the top, female at the bottom, that's how it is always. And when I finished this problem, I just assumed this was 59 without paying any attention at all. I assumed this was females taking geometries. And wouldn't you know it? Females taking geometry is one of the answer choices. And that happens to be actually the very first one. A, they want to grab you before you go anywhere. They put the trap right there. The correct answer is not A. Correct answer is not A. Because this is not female, this is males. Right here. The correct answer happens to be C. There you go. So it is not female taking algebra 2. It is not females taking geometry. It is in fact males taking geometry. Males taking geometry right here. Males taking geometry. And that category accounts for approximately 19% approximately because the 1% that we subtracted would have been 3.1. Obviously, we can't have 3.1 person. And that's the only reason why they use the word approximation. Number 14. In number 14, we are told that we have an outlier. What's an outlier? An outlier is an exception. It's an exception, something that doesn't happen very often. A deviation from norm. A deviation from norm, a one-off. If something is described as a as a one-off, as un one, as a one-off, that means it's uh, it's a fluke. It doesn't happen very often. It's not normal. It's an exception. It's an aberration. It's an we'll get to all of those in a second. Let's before we worry about vocabulary, let's finish the problem. It says we have an outlier measurement of 24, which is which is an error. An outlier measure for measurement of 24. An outlier measurement of 24. is an error. The question is, which will 
which will change the most if 24 were removed. So we have a set of data, set of data that looks something like this. I'm going to quickly put it here if I, if I may. We have a, a 8, a 9, a 9, a 9, a 10, a 10, a, a 11, a 11, 4, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 3, 13, 13, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, and then here somebody by mistake recorded an observation as 24. My guess is it's most likely it's going to be most likely it was 16, which was recorded as 24. That's an, that's an error. That's an outlier. It's an exception. It's deviation from norm. It's just too far out. It's a one-off. It's not something you expect to see all the time. The question is, if you were to remove this 24 from this set of data, which of the following will be affected the most? Which of the which of the false which will which will change the most if 24 were removed? If you were to take out this observation, will it? Which one will be most affected? The mean, the median, the range, or all of them? And the answer, of course, is that the one that will be affected most is the range. Because the range, as it stands right now, the range as it stands right now is 24, which is the highest observation, minus the 8, which is the lowest observation, which is going to give us 16. If you remove that, then we're dealing with 16. Then we'll end up with 16 minus 8, which is 8. As you can see, a difference of 8. Removing the 24 will change the mean, which, which it will change the mean. It will bring the mean down because 24 is pulling the mean up. But the mean is somewhere around, we have all the way from 9, and then we have mean is around 12. As you can see, about half of them are on the other this side of 12, the other half are on this side. 2, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8 observations are to the left of the 12, and here we have 3, 5, and 8 observations are on the left. The mean is 12, around 12, if not exactly 12, around 12. When we remove 24, it will bring the mean down because 24 is pulling the mean up, but it's not going to change it by it's not going to change it by 8. It's, instead of 16, it's 24, it's 8. It is the 8 that is being distributed over 21. So the answer is range. It is the range that's going to be affected the most. What about the median? Most likely, most likely the median will not change at all. Let's find out very quickly, shall we? So we have 1 and 3, 4, 6, 8, 8 here. So there are 21 observations, which means ordinarily the mean would have been we'll have to have 10 on this side or 10 on that side. So we have 4, 6, 8, 10. There you go. 10 on this side and 10 on that side. The median as it stands is 12. If we take away if we take away 24, now we have only 20 observations. And now the mean is going to be the mean the mean of 10th and 11th, which is still 12. So the median does not change at all. Median does not change at all mean changes but just a little bit, the answer is range. It is the range that is going to change the most. That is going to change the most. Number 15. Before I go to number 15 and before I end up erasing everything by, by mistake, let's learn the word aberration. We learned it in our vocabulary lessons and it doesn't hurt to Oh, I misspelled it. It only has one B. I misspelled it. It has only one B. And we learned it on B number 15. Learn the word, improve your vocabulary, work on your vocabulary, as I always remind you, which is the second half of the exam where vocabulary plays a major role. Just type in SAD vocabulary words, day number 15. Video will pop right up. Watch the video, learn this word and learn some other useful, good words for the SAT. Number 15. In number 15, we are being asked to give an interpretation. Of the intercept. And the graph looks something like this. It starts at 5. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 
So two, four, six, eight, ten, so far. It starts at five. And the next one is next one is eight. And the one after that is eleven and so on and so forth. We find that it increases by three each time. And it's something like this. Here we have the hours and here we have the cost expressed in dollar. The question simply is what is the interpretation of this intercept, the y intercept, the y intercept here. That y intercept that we see there, because, because of the fact that it starts with phi, that y intercept actually is the initial cost of hiring the board. Apparently, apparently we are hiring a board regardless of how long you're going to use the board, whether you're going to use it for 10 hours or 10 minutes, when you first hire the board, you have to pay $5. And after that, it goes up by $3 per hour. At the end of one hour, you'll owe them $8. At the end of two hours, you'll owe them $11 and so forth. So, the question was, what's the interpretation of intercept? Intercept here represents the initial cost of hiring the board. Yes, so such choice A. In the next question, in number, number 16, they go on, they go on to ask for a relationship between C and H. Relationship between C, what we see on the y, 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 y axis, and H, which is the hour that we see on the x axis. And the relationship is very simple. The Y, which is the C here, the cost, has to equal to the five dollars that you have to pay initially, right here, five dollars that you have to pay initially, and after that, for each hour that we use it, we have to pay three dollars. For each hour that we use it, we have to pay three dollars. So it's five plus three H, or if you like, three H plus five, which is how they give the pro, which is which is how they give the answer. Even though typically we put the intercept first and then uh, the other quantity, but the answer choice is because they want to be because they want to be cute, they put 3h plus 5. And then is answer choice, what number are we at? We are at 16. Number 16, yes, that is that is how they give us, and that's answer choice C. Let's look at number 17. In number 17, it says, for what value of x is the function minimum? And the function looks something like this. Function that is given to us looks something like this. For what value of x is the function minimum? Well, what's, what is the function minimum? The minimum is right here. That's the minimum value of the function, and that is negative 2. That is negative 2. But be careful, negative 2, of course, is one of the answer choices. They're not asking, they're not asking what is the minimum value of the function. This, this, number, this number, negative 2, is the answer to the question, what is the minimum value of the function. But that is not the question that is being asked here. That's, that's not what we are being asked. If that were the question, if that were the question, it's a hypothetical statement, if that were the question, what is the minimum value of the function, the answer would have been negative 2. The question is, for what value of x is the function minimum? Function is minimum right here. For what value of x? Well, the value of x is that point, happens to be right here, which is negative 3. So the correct answer to the problem, for what value of x is the function minimum? The answer is, the function is at, fun function is at its minimum value when x is negative 3. And that's answer choice B. We'll stop right here, we'll meet again tomorrow, we'll pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you wish to work with me, if you would like to hire me to help you with the exam, I can help you prepare for the math part, obviously, uh, but I can also help you with the grammar portion, which is the writing portion, 
and I can most certainly help you with the vocabulary lessons. You can get hold of me by sending me an email by visiting the website kashwaniprep.com. Send me an email from there or fill out the form, whatever you like. I will talk some more. Okay? Bye now.